Hi, my name is Jen. I am a member of the community team here at Evernote. We are always looking for cool and interesting ways that people use their Evernote. Today, I am very excited to be speaking with Sterling, who uses Evernote to organize his nonprofit, Cat for Kids. Hello. Hello, yeah, thanks for having me. I appreciate it. So to kick us off, what does Cat for Kids do? Uh, so Cat for Kids is a 501c3 nonprofit that helps families who are fighting pediatric cancer. Um, specifically, we have we have two pro programs. Um, our primary programming it, program is one that we where we sponsor families and pay their bills. So we assign each family a five thousand dollar budget, and then we just basically pay their bills for our, however long it takes to to spend that money. The idea being that if we can kind of reduce the financial strain that these families are under, they can focus on their child instead of the bills. Uh, thus giving the child a better chance at beating cancer. That's where all of our donations go. That's where the vast majority of our efforts go. Um, that's, that's our main program. Our secondary program is our character visits where we'll bring Captain America and the Avengers to the children, either in home or hospital or near, anywhere in between, um, and many other characters as well. We have lots of princesses and superheroes, et cetera, to, to kind of cheer the kids up with the idea being we can kind of take the kids uh, minds off of their treatment because the treatment is often quite harsh uh, and so we can kind of cheer them up and and kind of bring some some uh, cheer and happiness to their life then then we're doing uh, they're helping out the kids the child specifically so those are our two programs uh, we've been doing this since 2015 and uh, been growing growing every year and uh, the more I talk to the hospitals around the nation the more I realize there's a big need for us so we're, we're gonna keep at it that is a fantastic thing that you were doing. Um, how did you get started? So uh, initially, I first started uh, doing some fundraisers for, I, I live in Denver, Colorado, so I was doing some foreign fundraisers for two organizations, one being Children's Colorado, fairly well-known organization, uh, and also an organization called Brent's Place, which is very similar to Ronald McDonald House. Most people have heard of Ronald McDonald House. This is very similar to that, but it's for immune compromised children, primarily kids who are going through cancer treatment. And so getting to know them and, 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 and talking through the stories and meeting some of the families and that sort of thing, I initially was just doing fundraisers for them. Uh, and then this kind of like developed into, okay, well, there is a, First, the financial sponsorship thing. There's there's a need there in discussing with the parents and discussing with the social workers at at Brent's place that there's no organizations out there to help with bills. Literally none. Um, there there are organizations out there that will help with like gas and grocery cards. There are organizations that can help with medical bills, but there's no one there to pay the cell phone bill. There's no one there to pay the car payment. That sort of thing. And uh, what we quite hear quite often is that while the child is going through cancer treatment, the parents can't work. They have to spend all of their time with their child, either in the hospital or taking, if they're not staying in the hospital, they're taking their child back and forth between treatments. And so they literally can't work. And it's quite often, and it's a sad story, we hear it too often that the parents are usually let go from their job because they're focusing on their child and who wouldn't. Uh, uh, but you know the bill collectors still, they, they, the people still want their money. You know, the cell phone bill still has to get paid and the car payment still has to get paid. So. Uh, we saw that this is the this is where we wanted to to spend most of our energies, and uh, it kind of morphed into this from say 2014. Well, it was an idea in 2013, and then it morphed over 2014. By 2015, we were kind of solid on family sponsorship and character visits. That's kind of how we got going. Um, how does Cat for Kids use Evernote to help carry out all that organization? Uh, it's it's quite useful, I would say, and I imagine there's a lot of other organizations that, that could probably say this, but our biggest way that we use Evernote is information retrieval. So none of us, well, first of all, I should say and talk about this more, but we're an entirely volunteer organization. We all have full-time jobs all, <laughs> and no one collects a paycheck at this nonprofit. So um, we all are working very, very hard. And thus uh, we have very little, I guess, uh, mental energy to remember all of the details and all of the things uh, that go on because running a nonprofit is quite detailed. It's just like it would be for any of any small business, really. And so being able to um, pull up information, no matter where we are, we could be in California or New York or anywhere doing a fundraiser and uh, and we need on our phone or on our tablet or on our laptop, we need to be able to pull up crucial information about the nonprofit so that we can provide that to donors, to potential partners, 
things like our physical mailing address, which I do not have memorized, <laughs> our, our uh, PO box, our uh, employer identification number, things like this, that there's no way I'm gonna remember all these things. And so being able to have those like front and center, wherever we are, be able to pull it up, even if there's no internet access, which is beautiful. Most, most pl platforms can't do that. So uh, that's probably the biggest way we use it. And then we have uh, plenty of other use cases that I'm sure everybody else does in terms of like meeting minutes and meeting notes um, and uh, planning for events, event planning kind of documents. Uh, and then of course, task. Task is pretty huge for us as well. Okay, so the most, just like the note itself is the plain uh, catching of all the thoughts and details. That's the most helpful for you. Yeah, just being able to get the information at our fingertips really quickly when we need it. We're all super, super busy. So just that kind of speed is, is super important for us. Okay. Um, so what kind of challenges has uh, Evernote helped you overcome? I think, you know, touch, I touched on a little bit, but um, because we're all so busy, we all <laughs> are, are doing many, many things at the same time. The, the biggest challenge I think it's solved for us is time, saving time. Uh, because we don't, you know, being able to go, there's plenty of other platforms, document storage platforms out there, um, personal knowledge management solutions out there that uh, you have to go digging and you can't necessarily find what you're looking for when you need it. Uh, think about like commu personal communication platforms, messenger platforms and things like that when you need to find that message that you sent. So at such time ago, like um, we, we generally just don't have time for that. And we find we don't have to with, with Evernote. Uh, and the Evernote search feature specifically is so incredibly useful. I don't actually use tags for, for any of the notes because we found we don't need it. And I know there's a lot of people out there use tags, but um, search is so powerful that I can find everything that we've got in there whenever we need it, um, just just very, very quickly. And so that's, that's, that's huge for us. Um, yeah. Awesome. Uh, well, could we take a look at how you use Evernote in real time? Yes. So. This is our um, little Evernote instance. There's, and you can see the home home is very useful too. And uh, the whole concept of the pin note. Remember how I mentioned that being able to pull up our employer identification number quickly when we need it, like super useful. And our physical address and our, you know, physical mailing address, older addresses, um, all this kind of like basic information that we need all the time. And of course, I can't remember any of that stuff. So having that there is 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 super useful, um, especially in a pin note for that quick draw. Yeah, yeah, very, very. You know, that's super important. I was going to use a filtered note widget, but I, this this is this is the main note that I use all the time, <laughs> and so so it's got everything in it, all the information we need, like really, really quickly. Um, I can I can show you we have uh, you can see our my tasks are here we've got a bunch of fundraising events coming up um, so you can see the tasks this is really nice on home of course we can go look at the tasks and look at them in our uh, tasks and to do's notebook here uh, but it's really nice just having it on the home screen to where it's just all right there uh, easy to see saying okay do November seventeenth this is this is coming up we've got to set up our new merch store on the new platform which basically has shirts like this and stuff. Um, so to having tasks like that, that quick view, and even though there's nothing here, I use the scratch pad all the time. I'll just put a jot a quick note down there and then I'll delete it when I'm, when I've kind of solved it. So that's, that's really useful as well. Um, board meeting prep, I'm prepping for a board meeting that's happening right now. So we're, we're, I'm putting those notes together. That'll be built in our presentation. Um, that's, that's all something that we very commonly use. And then uh, standard meeting notes, like I mentioned, we, we have a ton of meetings and be able to track all of that and what we're doing. And, um, and we're starting to like do our document repository. We have uh, our kind of overview video. This is an older one. We're working on a new one right now. That's in our tasks, believe it or not, to finish our uh, new overview video. But the old one is here, it has a quick link. And because of the, the Google Drive integration, which uh, Google is kind enough to give us a free instance of Google Suite, G Suite. So, we have that integration set up so you can see it's already connected and we can just get right into that video if we need to. It is a large video, that's 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 why it's not just playing right here, it's huge. It's probably larger than it needs to be. <laughs> but anyway, that's I think that's it in a nutshell. Um, it's most, like I mentioned, informational retrieval is key for us. Being able mm -hmm. to see our most recent notes is really handy. Do you use Evernote to communicate with your team, like assigning tasks? Uh, so 
Yes, on occasion. Uh, I don't have any in here right now, uh, but it ha we have done that. Uh, we do, however, use Evernote for sharing information. So uh, if we go, like we'll use Web Clipper on the regular basis to go get something on the internet, or it, there might be, for example, I did one last night. It was, um, oh, the business cards. So we have these, everybody loves our business cards because it's a little Captain America shield. It's round, our business cards are round. And so, I could not remember the website that we get these from. And so I just went to it, clipped that. So it's in here now. And so we can, you know, share that out. And so I will share the notes with other board members and staff members uh, because they're using Evernote as well. Um, thank you. This was really interesting to see. So you started in 2015, 2022 now. What are your goals for the future? We got some big ones. Um, I think I, one of my big goals, personal goals for the for the nonprofit is to get it a little more, quite a bit more self-sufficient uh, within the next few years to where it doesn't need quite so much of my uh, personal attention um, to where I can be more effective. If I do that, when I do, not if, but when I do that, I can be more effective in terms of like getting grants and bigger donations and doing more bigger fundraising and that sort of thing. So that's kind of a, a near term goal. Uh, this year, so far, we have sponsored 13 children, 13 families. Overall, we've sponsored 55 families over the years at 5,000 per family, which, you know, where that, you know, compared to the giant nonprofits, that's like tiny, but compared to where we started, it's it's pretty good. Uh, and I, our initial goal is to do 20 families per year. So I think we'll make 15 this year, but 20 would be a, a good goal. And then the next probably three year goal would be 50 families per year. Uh, we work with uh, hospitals all over the nation and there are several of them like UCSF and Stanford that are like, oh, we have a wait, like we have tons, like you just say the word and we'll open the floodgates, but we're not going to do that to you right now because we know you have limited funds. So uh, the ultimate goal would be to just like open the floodgates at every hospital that we work with around the nation and just have it be an open door. And as long as the, you know, can verify that the family has a child go through cancer treatment, then we they get they get brought in, we take care of them, we get them sponsorship, we get them visits if they need that sort of thing. Uh, but right now we're just don't quite have the money there. So our, our goal is to grow it and, and raise awareness and, and get our fundraising going to where we can we can do more and help more families. Because every hospital, like we just got reached out to by uh, Kentucky Children's Hospital last week, never worked with them ever before. And, and they're like, we've heard about you. You do great work. We'd love to talk about some of the families that we have that could use your help. I'm like, this is amazing. It's a great problem to have, but like we need to make more money. So um, that's the, that's, those are the initial goals is to probably get to 20 initially sponsored families and then 50, I think would be a big one. Um, yeah, I think, I think that's, that's, that's the, the big goals. Super admirable goals and ambitious, but I'm positive that you're going to get there. Um, okay, so uh, in terms of fundraising and getting involved for people who are watching the video, how can they do that? Uh, there's a number. Thank you for asking. There's a number of ways. Um, first of all, they can go to capforkids.org, and that's spelled C-A-P-F-O-R-K-I-D-S.org. I spelled that out because there's another nonprofit organization with a very similar name. That's Caps for Kids. They have hats. Caps. This is, that's not us. They're a great organization too, but just C-A-P-F-O-R-K-I-D-S.org. Uh, go there. You can donate there. You can actually reach out to us if you have, for example, we have a big uh, fundraising gala coming up in December, and so we're accepting like gift donations. Like some some companies are giving us like vacation packages. Other companies are giving us big collectibles and and that sort of thing. And so if somebody has something physical they want to donate for one of those fundraisers, they can reach out to us on that website. Uh, if you'd actually like to volunteer your time, I'd say follow us on Facebook. Again, you could just look for. Cap for Kids, C A P F O R K I D S. Uh, you'll find us and um, and just follow us on there. And we are constantly reaching out to the community at large to say, hey, we need more volunteers for this particular event. And then we'll pull you into the volunteer groups and 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 get things going. And we always need volunteers from just general basic logistics stuff to working a booth at a convention to um, to actually, if you happen to be a costumer who looks like they walked out of a Disney film, then we could certainly use you as well for the, for the hospital and home visits, that sort of thing. So, but that would be done on, on the Facebook page. So. Perfect. And we will put that link in the description of this video as well for everyone. Easy access. Awesome. Thank you. Well, thank you so much for your time and walking us through how you use Evernote. My pleasure. I love it. Love, love, love Evernote. Never going to stop using that. <laughs> 
To learn more about cat for kids or to get involved, you can click the links in our video description. If you or someone you know uses Evernote to do good in your community, we would love to hear from you. So drop us a comment or you can send us an email at community at evernote.com.